Hey everybody, I am sitting at my computer today. Very, very excited to go over my 2022 rose order with you today. So excited. Um, winter time is a great time to order roses. It's actually the best time to order roses instead of waiting until uh, spring. But then again, you know, that's if you only go to the nurseries, right, to buy potted roses, which really there's nothing wrong with that, nothing wrong with it at all. But um, if you're an average rose gardener like I am, then you love to go online and find um, a grower that you really, really like, which I really, really love, Palatine Roses. And I think I'm saying that right. Um, but anyway, palatineroses.com. They are a grower actually in Canada, and I honestly can't even remember how I found out about them, but, you know, through the grapevine of rosarians, okay, <laughs> is how I found out about them, um, and I ordered from them several years ago, and just the the quality of their rootstock is incredible. They, for most of their roses, they use multiflora which apparently is very cold hardy and that's why they're grown in Canada. But here in the South, they grow like weeds. I mean, it is, they're so healthy, super vigorous growers. And so I just prefer to buy my roses online from them. So um, anyway, so I'm gonna go, I'm here sitting at my computer today and I thought I would go over my list with you and I'm gonna read off the description online. Um, just so you can kind of get an idea of what the roses um, smell like, look like, what they can do, how big they get, and all that fun stuff. So um, I'm just going to sit here at my computer and tell you all the fun stuff. Okay, so the first one that is actually not on my list, but I ordered it through my mom because her and I both, we were on the computer at the same time trying to log in to Palatine and they've become so popular now that um, the traffic on the website, like it actually crashed the first day that people tried to get on. Um, so they had to tr do this like waiting room kind of thing to allow everybody in so it wouldn't crash. So um, everybody's like grabbing as much in their cart as they can, right? Like get as much as you can. Um, so this particular one that I, my mom got for me, which I'll get from her once it arrives, obviously, is called American Beauty. And I'll throw up a picture on um, the video while I'm going through all this. Um, but American Beauty grows rich and vibrant, dark, deep pink flowers with a lighter reverse. Notable is the to intoxication intoxicating fragrance that wafts out of the large double blooms. These develop frilly edging as they fully open. American Beauty is a bushy rose plant growing to be four to six feet tall. Knowing that height, it'll probably be like a climber here in the south because usually if it's a shorter climber um, in a colder area, it's gonna get huge down here just because it's so much warmer, so much longer. Um, but this one is a repeat blooming. It's a large bloom size, deep pink, high centered, double petal count, very fragrant, uh, bushy form. It says four to six feet tall and you can grow it in uh, zones 5B to 9D and it needs six plus hours of direct sunlight. Um, the breeder is Le Deschaux, 1875. Hopefully I said that right. And then this one is actually grafted on Laxa. Um, I honestly don't know if I have any roses on Laxa. Interesting. So they graft on Laxa and Multiflora. So we'll see how that ends up working in my garden. But it was just a really beautiful color. I don't really have many hot pink roses. And so I really wanted to give that one a try, especially if it's fragrant. I want it in my yard. Um, okay, so the next one I got, if I move down the list here, is a beautiful rose called Barack. Excuse me as I pull it up on the internet. Um, again, I'll show you a picture. 
Uh, this rose is very fragrant. Barack begins to bloom in delightful shades of apricot with tones of yellow and pink. The medium-sized blossoms are full and old-fashioned in form with reflexed petals as the flower matures. The charming and changing flower color is highlighted by dark green foliage. Barack will grow to be eight to 10 feet tall. So this one, hi Jeff. This one, hi. Um, I am probably gonna put out on the back wall of the pool. I'm taking a video right now. Oh, yeah. Okay. Can I help you? Are you gonna show it to? Everyone on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> what do you need? Nothing. Nothing? You just coming to say hi? Yeah. Okay, all right. I didn't know you were doing a video. <laughs> No, it's okay. It's okay. All right, go on. Got some pretty flowers. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad to know that you're going to grow up loving flowers. I'm done with my reading. You're done with your reading? Okay. All right, where was I? Um, so I was going to say, I was saying, I'll put it out back by the pool um, where we have that railing is probably what I'll end up doing. Um, that way it can kind of just grow crazy back there. Um, cause I did have some roses that have died or they're just not really doing very well back there. So I'm going to replace them with, you know, one of these, um, and excuse the bumpy camera. I don't have a, um, what are those things called? A tripod or whatever. I'm so I'm just holding it with my hand. So yeah, I know that's probably really annoying and I need to like get my act together. Um, but thanks for watching anyway. <laughs> Uh, so this one is repeat blooming. It's apricot blend in color, medium side, medium sized blooms, high centered bloom shape. Petal count is full. It's very fragrant and it's a climbing form, nine to 10 feet. Uh, zones 5B through 9D, six hours of sunlight. And then the breeder is Evers in 1999 is when it was introduced. And this is on multiflora rootstock. Beautiful rose. Anything that reminds me of a sunset, I love it. Love, love, love. Love that color. Okay, next one I got was Beverly Eleganza, which is a cordis rose. Now, I've had this rose out by the mailbox, but it was not, it's not a grafted rose. It's a own root. It's an own root rose that I got at Shambly's. It has never done well. Like, I don't know what the deal is, but it is not done well at all. So I'm just, I've given it literally, I think three years to try and do something and I'm done. Like you're out of there and I'm going to put the, um, this one in its place, which with it being grafted, it should do a whole lot better. And again, I know a lot of people feel differently about this, um, but grafted roses, you know, I guess it depends where you live and all that. Um, but just from my experience, grafted roses work better as far as more blooms, more vigorous growth, um, and more d disease resistant. So just my opinion. Uh, anyway, so here's the description for Beverly. We call the very fragrant Beverly our chameleon. The ever-changing pink flowers open to reveal a large, full, classic bloom. As the blossoms mature, they transform into many different beautiful expressions of what it means to be a rose. This plant is healthy and will grow three to four feet tall, tolerating many different growing conditions, including the hot and dry south. Additionally, Beverly has won a large number of rose awards, including Nance... Fragrance Award and Favorite Rose Award 2010, La Tacita Gold Medal 2010, and a whole bunch of other awards that I'm not going to list off. Um, it's a hybrid tea, repeat blooming, pink in color, large bloom size, high centered shape, full petal count, and very, very fragrant. The rich rose fragrance has, a, has fresh notes of lemon, sweet perfume, of lychee and plum. It's bushy, upright plant growth, gets three to four feet tall, and zones, it grows in zones five to nine, six hours of sunlight, um, and the breeder was Cordis in 2008. And it's on multiflora. Yes, Jeff. Um, 
<coughs> Once you're done with that, can I call, because I saw his playing on the Switch. Okay, why don't you get the the iPod and call him on that? It's dead. Well, okay, make sure it's charged. Go ahead and charge it. It's dead. Okay, well, charge it, and then you can get on. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, Christmas break. Kids are home. I love my children. They're awesome. Um... Okay, next rose on my list. This one I'm so, so excited about. Um, it's called Bliss Parfuma. And I love the color. It's like a peachy pink apricot. Um, more of a pink than apricot. But it has just a little bit of yellow in it. So it kind of blends a bit. So here's the description for this one. Healthy bliss perfume of blooms and flushes throughout the season. The creamy pastel apricot pink flowers are large, full, and old fashioned in form. This reminds me of Evelyn a lot and that's why I'm like excited about it because it's a Cordish rose and if it will look even just a smidgen like Evelyn, but with better growing power for me, I will be super happy. Okay. Uh, with healthy foliage, beautiful perfume, and delicately colored flowers, this wonderful rose plant is suitable for many garden dreams. Bliss Parfuma grows upright and reaches three to four feet in height. This rose has been recognized by a large number of international rose trials, Baden Baden Gold Medal 2016, and a whole bunch of others that I'm not going to list off because that would just take forever. Um... This is a Floribunda rose. It repeat blooms. It's a pink blend, large in size, rosette in shape, very full petal count, very fragrant. Um, the fragrance description is the rose perfume, the rose perfume of Bliss Perfuma. Sorry, there's a lot of perfumes in there. Is one with fruity notes of apricot, apple, and quince. Hints of vanilla and cream complete the scent. Doesn't that sound lovely? And doesn't it, like, when you read that, just get you so excited about spring? Oh my goodness, I can't wait. Um, it's upright in form, plant height three to four feet, zones five to nine, six hours of sunlight, Cordis 2017, on multi multiflora rootstock. All right, let's see what's next. And I'm, that's probably what, that was like one of my number ones that I wanted to get on my list because of the color. Next one is Blossom Time. Blossom Time Blooms are a rose pink with a darker lavender pink reverse. The flowers are very large and double in form, reflexing as they age, giving a starburst impression. Um, the stronger climber reaches 12 feet or taller and has dark green foliage. Blossom time also has been used as an exhibition rose. So it's repeat blooming, medium pink, very large bloom size, high centered bloom shape, double petal count, very fragrant. It's a climbing rose, you know, 12 feet or higher, zones five to nine, uh, six plus hours of sunlight. And then the breeder is O'Neill in 1951 and it's on multiflora rootstock. I'm really excited about that one because it's a really beautiful clear pink um, with a purpley kind of tinge to it. So that's, and I just like the name too. It's really pretty. Blossom time. Um, all right, let's see here. <clears throat> I'm going down the list. Um, I tried to get Charming Piano, but I didn't get it in time. That thing sold out so fast. So fast. Um, next one is Dreamland. Dreamland's pointed red buds open to silky shades of light pink blooms with a darker center. The sweetly scented romantic medium double flowers are reminiscent of peonies when fully open, attracting pollinators. The self-cleaning climber rarely, rarely requires deadheading and reaches 8 to 10 feet in height. So I had a lot of roses out back by the... Um, Again, by the railing, back behind the pool, um, a lot of roses back there just didn't do well. And I know it's probably because most of them were David Austin roses. They just, I don't know what it is. I have no luck with David Austin. I don't know what the deal is. 
so frustrating because they're so beautiful and they smell so good, but they just don't work for me, unfortunately. Um, so I was thinking about putting this one back there as well. Um, so it's a climbing rose, repeat blooming, light pink in color, large bloom size, rosette bloom shape, double petal count, just fragrance says scented, okay? Um, <laughs> fragrance description is sweet rose perfume with floral notes and a hint of herbaceous flair. Interesting. Um, plant height is eight to nine feet, probably taller down here. Uh, USDA zone, five to nine, six hours of sunlight. The breeder is Schmitz in 2014, and it's grafted on multiflora. All right, let's see here. What is next? Go down the list. Oh, so, and a lot of these are already sold out because they're really, really popular. Um, but there's still actually a lot of varieties that are available. I think American Beauty is still available, but I think pretty much all the other ones that I got are sold out. So, um, next one, Eden Climber. So, you know, I had those three Eden roses up by the walkway in the front of the house that were doing really beautifully for many years. They did great. Um, only issue with having the roses there is Eden. And again, this may be the particular type of rootstock that I had, um, with those roses because I bought those roses locally. So I don't really know. They were probably Huey rootstock, which is most likely the case. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and get one of these. So it's on multiflora. I'm hoping that maybe it'll handle black spot better in that, you know, in that case. Um, but yeah, I ended up, you know, taking those out because after they bloom in the spring, it just looks so crummy up there all like the rest of the summer look crummy and like that's you know such a high traffic area and I really wanted it to be beautiful you know midsummer and not just be like oh you see all these canes that have no leaves on them because they would lose their leaves every summer I mean it was kind of ridiculous um and it was just I had a hard time keeping that whole bed clean because it honestly had too many roses in it and they'd get all crazy and um, it's hard to clean out the bed when there's thorns left and right and so we just ended up taking everything out and putting in those limelight hydrangeas which I do have a video on that if you want to look in my uh, video history I'm sure you could find it so um, it's just a little bit easier to maintain up front and um, anyway I'm excited about getting a new Eden and I'm probably going to I might put that in the back as well, or I might put it up front. Um, I'll just kind of decide when I get it and see how, you know, how it goes from there. Um, so here's the description for Eden. World-renowned Eden Climber displays blooms of soft creamy pink with carmine pink edges. The large, very full and globular flowers combined with the glossy and dark foliage are Eden's staple. This climber grows to, be, grows to be an impressive 10 to 12 feet tall. Eden Climber has been shown as an ex exhibition rose and recognized by the World Federation of Rose Societies with the, with the Rose Hall of Fame Award in 2006. And this is um, a rose. Uh, the other Another name for Eden is Pierre de Ronsard, if I'm saying that right. That's what they call it in Paris. And I did see this rose in Paris when we visited there back in 2016. Um, God, it was gorgeous. So beautiful. It was climbing on the side of this chateau. It was so pretty. Um, so it's a repeat bloomer. Pink in color, large bloom size, globular, open cupped bloom shape. Very double, scented, climbing. Uh, plant gets to 10 feet or higher. Uh, zone five to nine, six plus hours of sun, and the breeder is Melon in 1986, and it's grafted on multiflora. Okay, next one is, 
I'm gonna go to the second page. I think I'm almost halfway done. Excuse me. Okay. Um, I'm getting there. I'm looking for it. Almost there. Okay, Moonstone. Moonstone was another one. I've always wanted this rose, have not had it, and I'm excited to plant this one. The elegant and classic flowers of Moonstone are a white, finely edged in pink. The high centered blooms are very large, double, and born mostly in solitary, making this an ideal exhibit exhibition rose. Glossy and fresh green foliage adorn this vigorous grower. Moonstone can reach four to five feet in height. Um, it's a hybrid tea. It's a repeat bloomer. It's um, almost white with a touch of pink in color. Very large bloom size, high centered bloom shape, double petal count, very scented or highly scented, I should say. Um, upright plant form, four to five feet in height, zone, grows in zones six to 10, um, six plus hours of direct sun, and the breeder is Careth in 1998, and it's grafted on Multiflora. I'm really excited about that one. I don't have a ton of um, hybrid teas in my garden, um, so I'm excited about adding a couple more. All right, let's see here. What is next? I didn't get that one. I almost got Pink Enchantment Eleganza, but I thought I'd rather try Moonstone. Um, okay, let's see here. Another one I got. I don't know if I'm going to say this right, but I'm going to try. It's called Sean Ingeborg. Um, this rose blooms rose pink with flushes of brilliant ruby. The rounded red buds open to large cupped and very full old fashioned blooms that quarter as they open. Repeat blooming, Sean Ingeborn grows upright and can reach five feet in height. This is a historic rose hybrid and a hybrid perpetual rose. It's repeat blooming, light pink, large bloom size, open cupped and quartered, very full petal count, scented, upright form, five to six feet in height and grows in zones five to nine, six plus hours of sun, and the breeder is Keese in 1921 and it's grafted on Multiflora. Um, my mom ended up getting Souvenir de la Malmaison, which I love that one. Oh, and I did get one Summer Romance, which by the way, a lot of, most of these roses I'm talking about, they, they're so popular that they were only limiting one rose per household per season. So if you got one, raise your hand in the comments and let me know because I talk about this rose like all the time and I was worried I wasn't going to be able to get another one. And honestly, like, I mean, I already have like eight of them, but I really wanted another one because it's just like my favorite. <laughs> so um, I decided I'm going to do my best to get it and I got it, thankfully. Um, here's Summer Romance Description. Summer Romance Parfuma is adorned with old-fashioned large and double blooms. The velvety pink flowers are strongly perfumed. Growing in cl large clusters, the flowers float above ro robust dark green light glossed fo lightly glossed foliage. A healthy plant, Summer Romance Parfuma reaches three to four feet in height, which is just not true. Like, I mean, mine gets like 12 feet tall down here, so... Take note if you live in the South. Um, it was the recipient of the sought after ADR award in 2015. So it is a cordis rose. It's a floribunda. It's repeat blooming, medium pink in color, large bloom size, a rosette bloom shape, very full petal count, very fragrant. Uh, the fragrance description is... Um, here we go. The rose perfume of Summer Romance perf Perfuma is combined with notes of licorice, apple, and a delicate floral scent. The bush uh, plant form is bushy. 
again, it says three to four feet tall. No, sorry, it gets way taller than that. Uh, very healthy, uh, grows in zones five to nine, six plus hours of sunlight. Cordis is the breeder and it was brought to the market in 2014 and it is grafted on Multiflora. So what else did I get? There's one more, I believe. Yeah. One more. Uh, it's called Yolande Aragon. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but man, this is a gorgeous rose. Uh, pinkish purple with lighter outer petals. Yolande Aragon has very fragrant, large, and very full cupped and cornered blooms. Reaching four to five feet in height, this upright bush can produce a second flush of blooms in the fall. Um, it's a historic rose, repeat bloomer, mauve in color, large bloom size, open cupped and quartered, very full petal count, very fragrant, upright plant form, four to five feet in height, grows in size, uh, grows in zones four to nine, six plus hours of sun, um, and the breeder is Viber in 1843. So it's a, that's an old rose. And it's graft, this one is grafted on Laxa. All right, so I think that's, I think that's it. That is my rose order for 2022. They are set to ship in February and I'll be planting them pretty much as soon as I get them because um, we tend to usually have mild winters down here, uh, where I can plant easily. I mean, the coldest we get down here is like low twenties. I mean, we hardly ever see teens. So, I mean, usually we can plant year round down here. Um, so I'll be planting these up in February and, um, I'm so excited. I can't wait to see how they do this year. They're going to be so pretty, um, but please share with me in the comments what, if you ordered from Palatine, let me know what you got, and I'm so excited to read your comments, and um, again, I'll do a video when I plant these out, and I can't wait to share that with you. Hope y'all have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.